moving on perform integrated change control the focus here is towards the change control right and how to consolidate all the change requests uh, throughout the project so this process is all about that this is also done throughout the project so not just at one phase or one stage because the changes can occur at any stage of the project uh, so starting with the outputs what will achieve through this process we will have all the change requests approved so again don't take that statement to be absolute when i say approved what i actually mean is that we have to clear all the changes so approved not we have to clear all the change requests so the clearance here it could mean you have approved the change requests you have modified the change requests or you might even have rejected some change requests in all cases the change requests need not be approved every time so and the project management plan needs to be updated along with the project documents okay let's see what we have for inputs to achieve these outputs what inputs we need the project management plan before this process begins we will be needing the project plan uh, you know including all the scopes schedules you know costs baseline when i say baseline it is approved so without baseline they are just the plan after the approval they are called baseline just keep this in mind this is also an important term baseline is an important term the project documents it's also i think understood the work performance reports and change requests and again the enterprise environmental factors the organizational process assets it keeps repeating guys so hope that's clear let's move to the tools and techniques we will have to again consult the experts and uh, at this stage what experts uh, can help us you know legal experts technical experts risk management experts so all those experts can help us perform integrated change control tools okay again something important here these tools you know they are not physical tools but they could be manual or automated tools the tools applied are going to be in uh, both the deliverables the tools for deliverables and you know process tools data analysis uh, there are typically two types of analysis that we should know here first thing is alternatives analysis something important here so wherever i need an uh, i feel that there is a need for explanation i'm slowing down alternative analysis uh, focuses on what choices that we should choose you know in case of a solution to the problem a problem might have two or three solutions and we have to consider these an alternatives and we have to analyze which one is the right one for us so that's called the alternatives analysis so that is one of the data analysis methods and uh, second one could be uh, the cost benefit analysis this focuses on whether the solution itself that we have selected whether it is cost friendly or not cost effective or not next thing is decision making uh, i think we have learned this you know voting option and all and uh, finally the meetings is also covered too moving on okay the last process in this knowledge area closing project or phase basically the project manager has to ensure all the activities mentioned in the project management plan are achieved right so there will be direct questions from pimbok guide in the pmp exam uh, mentioned in the inputs and outputs from this process right so it's an important process close project or phase so please learn it with care and let's see what we have here to achieve as outputs project document updates every other document from the project has to be closed except the lessons learned so why ex except the lessons learned the lessons learned register will continue to be live because it acts as an input to the benefits management plan benefits management plan is not important for the pmp but just know that lessons learned register need not be closed in the closing project phase because it's a live document it, it acts as a input for something else final product service or result transition i think this is also self explanatory final report yeah this is important what does it contain final report contains firstly a description of summary of the project right so it has objectives versus deliverables what objectives are we talking about the scope objectives versus scope deliverables the cost objectives versus cost deliverables quality objects versus quality deliverables so uh, the final report again could have validation results so it, it can have scheduled plan versus uh, actual plan so description of uh, the final product is also available here right and also the summary of risks that are associated with the product right when you are using a product what risks are involved with it that is also involved in the final product organizational process assets 
that has to be updated and uh, as mentioned before just for the sake of repetition they could include the project documents support documents they could include the phase closure documents uh, they could be lessons learned so to achieve this we have eight inputs i think most of them are already covered so i'll however go by the list the project charter acts as an input the project managing plan the management plan acts as an input the project documents you know all of them are important here because we are at the closing stage remember acceptance of deliverables from all the stakeholders right when we say stakeholders they could be internal customers external customers acceptance from the sponsor the one who is sponsoring the project right business documentations act as an input agreements we learned what agreements are between vendors and the customers ndas right so those agreements act as an input the procurement documents i think this is something we have not covered or talked about we will talk about this in depth in the project procurement management so for now just know that we need to close or we need to use the procurement documentation in the closing phase and uh, finally the organizational process assets right what what tools and techniques do we need the expert judgment we are at the closing stage remember so at this stage what expert should we consult so we should consult the audit experts we should consult the legal experts so these two experts we have to consult at this closing phase data analysis here a different set of analysis techniques are used first thing is document analysis document analysis is something which validates the documents the next analysis could be regression analysis regression analysis what does it mean this is kind of a retrospection about what causes the variation right what causes the change so that uh, in the later or the future projects we don't have to repeat the same mistake change is something which is unplanned right that means it was not planned well it was not envisioned well so in regression analysis we will understand that better trend analysis trend is something uh, which links everything to the timeline right so next thing is variance analysis so data analysis is a big step so variance analysis is to improve the metrics right so plan versus actual finally the meetings also can be used as a tool for closing the phase or project okay so i think with that said we have finished the first knowledge area by closing the project or phase so let's quickly jump into the next knowledge area project scope management okay the word scope here can refer to both the product scope and the project scope so our focus should be on both areas not just the project scope the product scope is also important here so just know that we have six of these processes in this knowledge area so let's jump right in plan scope management so this process is a component of project management plan do you remember project management plan yeah so let's see what will be our outputs after this activity two outputs scope management plan requirements management plan what is a scope management plan uh, keep in mind that this is a planning document so this document tells about what needs to be done right the actual work is not recorded here this is just a plan of the scope so it includes the process for preparing a project scope statement so and also it enables the wbs wbs means the work breakdown structure when we talk about requirements management plan for the requirements we received from the customer how to proceed with achieving and all right so that plan is created as a result of this plan scope management so uh, the requirements are not already done the plan for the requirement management is created here the stress is on the plan so let's take the inputs what do we have here first we have the project charter we all know what it is uh, the project management plan the overall complete plan of the project that is the project management plan the enterprise environmental factors internal factors external factors and then also the organizational process assets you can see the enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets being repeated over and over what tools do we need to convert these inputs to outputs the expert judgment again see expert judgment is also an important thing or important tool in each and every project or each and every process so here we are going to consult the industry experts because we are planning the scope and then the application area experts are also quite often consulted at this stage and data analysis again different ways of collecting the requirements you know what that analysis is done you know elaborating the product scope the project scope elaboration you know how to control the scope these are the data analysis that we need at this stage and also finally the meetings 